Thank you, Jesus. 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 Saints, because of the limited time, I, I, I must share what's in my heart that God has put because many are struggling with how to repent because they're feeling things blocking. And that's because we need the break anointing to break yokes so that we are delivered of those things that are blocking. And sometimes we don't know what those things are. I want to share on what those things could be. And I want to say to you that next week, because I promised you this week, but that's why you always say, God willing, next week, I'm going to share on breaking soul ties, ungodly soul ties, demonic soul ties, toxic soul ties. And I want to share on how the enemy comes in our dreams and can affect us. I want to leave that until next week. Because every time we share and we are equipped, we're asking the Lord to set us free of those things that have us bound. But right now, I just want to share a bit on some of the rules for effective deliverance. And I give credit. I give credit to more than one person. But most of what I'm saying, aside from what I've learned, Dr. Olakoya and Dr. Stella Emanuel, I give credit for what I'm sharing right now. Many of us, we are walking in a way where we know we want to go deeper. We know we want more breakthrough. As I started off today, I said I'm hungering and thirsting for the Lord. My soul thirsts for you, O oh God, in a dry and weary land. Now, God will produce a thirst in us that we will want to spend more time with him. But sometimes there are barriers to our spending more time with him. So I want to quickly go through. I wouldn't get through all. Some things that you need to take note of in this season of behind closed doors. First of all, if you want to be genuinely and effectively delivered of bondage and I want to say to you we're body soul and spirit our soul is our mind our will our emotions your spirit man is sealed where the Holy Spirit lives that's the part that's regenerated that's the new creation when the Holy Spirit comes in when you say Jesus come into my spirit come into my heart but your mind may be in bondage and that needs to be transformed. Your mind has got to be renewed. And there are other things and other areas, things that we've been exposed to before we were saved, even while we're saved. So first of all, you must be born again. You can have demons affect you as a Christian. You are not possessed by Satan. You are possessed by Jesus Christ. But there are areas in your life you know you're struggling. Renew your commitment to the Lord or for the first time, give your life to the Lord. You must be born again. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We are spirit beings in a human body. And our spirit man is a new creation. And our spirit man must mature as the spirit of God increases in us. But I want you to know that God makes every provision for you to be set free of the things that want to hinder you in your walk. We are in a season where God is preparing his church to be without spot and wrinkle. So I want to say to you, 
renew that commitment to the Lord. Begin to ask the Lord, what sin is there in me that's been repeated over and over? What is the sin in me? And begin to write it down. Repentance is not just simply, oh Lord, forgive me of all my sins of omission and commission. Amen. That's not repentance. Repentance must be thorough, must be specific. General and haphazard confession of sin is not repentance. Because you've got to forsake that sin. And if it's something that's happening over and over, you've got to get help for repetitive intentional sin or even you feel as if you're a slave to the pornography some of you listening know exactly what I'm talking about or you are slave to an addiction of alcohol and you said that prayer inviting Jesus in but you don't seem to be able to stop doing this thing but even more so even if it's not something like addiction to alcohol or, or, or pornography, you are not living right. You're gossiping. You're doing all the things the word of God says not to do. And at night you say, I'm sorry, Lord. Amen. And you go to sleep. That's not repentance. The Lord is calling his church to turn away from those wicked ways. Begin to take stock and say, Lord, what is it in me? And wait and begin to write it down. Number three, you must be determined to be free. You must want that freedom. You must want to go deeper and higher. You must want to walk in more power and authority. You must want it. You must be determined. I can't remember when I, when I shared it. I think it may have been in one of the groups. We have in-house group sessions on Zoom. And I said you must desperately want to walk in freedom. Number four, you've got to start guarding your heart and your thoughts. I spoke about the mind earlier. You've got to be careful what you expose your mind to, what you expose your eyes to, what you expose your ears to. Sometimes we are getting deliverance, but we become sloppy with what we look at. Most times, there's hardly anything you can look at on television. Most times, with the advertisements, they defile your eyes. And many of us have had to make the hard decision. It doesn't even make sense turning on the television sometimes. Because we get defiled. We are not trying to be also spiritual. We simply are determined to be free and to walk and maintain that freedom. We don't want to walk in bondage. We will not accept what the world says you must do. We are not normal. We are peculiar people. We must love people. But we must walk holy lives. And I shared with you that your thoughts must center on Philippians 4, 8. Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, virtuous things, praiseworthy things, saints, go back to the ancient paths. That's what we are to fill our lives with. Jesus did not defile himself, but he loved. We are called to love as Jesus loves. We are called to live holy lives. Whatever is contrary to these things, we are to avoid. So if you're going through deliverance and you're still a little bit sloppy with those things, that's why you're not being set free as you should because deliverance is not kept back. God wants his people to be without spot and wrinkle. You've got to be conscious of the fact that you're going to be wrestling because life is a battle against Satan. But God has given us the spiritual weapons. And I've said already before in Ephesians 6.12. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You need to understand, and this is what a lot of us, we fall short of. It's a wrestling match. Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. You're not striving, but the devil doesn't want to let go of your mind. He doesn't want to let go of your emotion. He doesn't want to let go of your marriage. He doesn't want to let go of your children. You are not shutting up. You're not backing up. You're not backing down. You're taking up the weapons that God has given you, but it's got to start with us. And we've got to remove the planks. We've got to ask God to root out the sin. You've got to say, God, help me to love you with all my heart. With all my mind, with all my body, with all my soul, with all my spirit, with all my strength. That's been sold out to God. You see, many times we think we're sold out, but we're still bothering about what people think. God is going to take you through a season that when you're called, many will not go with you. You are going to go through a lonely season. You and him. Because when you're sold out, nothing else matters. You love people. You don't isolate yourself from them. But if they don't share your passion for him, it will not matter. If you can't walk that road, there is a stage you can't get to in your spiritual walk. God will take you through seasons of betrayal, seasons of false accusation. God will take you through seasons, various seasons, everything that Jesus went through, except we will not be crucified on the cross. Sometimes your friends, in fact, not sometimes, many will leave you. God will leave those he's planted. I want you to know That God is cheering you on. But many times we stop short of how much more he has for us. I want you to know, and I'm not going to go into detail about generational iniquity. I hope I may I even have time next week. That's a teaching on its own, but it's up on more than one of our teachings on life and life ministries. But sometimes you need to sit back. And the same way there's a spiritual mapping of principalities and powers and areas. You've got to do a spiritual mapping of your family. You've got to be aware of some of what was a pattern in your family. You've got to go into your history and your spiritual background because the assignment in your family is the assignment against you. So you will know what are some of the things that you're coming up against? You've got to ensure, and we, and we equip you, and we teach you how to do this. How to break curses and evil covenants that have been placed over your life. I've had in my own lifeline, evil covenants spoken. I've had to break those things. I need you to know that evil powers continue to enforce curses and maintain the dangerous terms of satanic covenants. And you will not experience real deliverance when there are curses hanging over your head. You need to understand demons, they are legal experts. They know what they have a legal right to. They know if great-great-grandfather was in one of those demonic lodges and souls were bartered for in exchange for favors from Satan. They have a legal right for what was done, but you have the legal right to cancel through the blood anything that has been spoken over you in Jesus' mighty name. You've got to begin to ask the Lord 
Why am I finding myself struggling and, and, and something that left is coming back? We've got to ask the Lord, what are the entry points that I'm still not aware of? You see, when we pray with people and demons leave, we disciple them. Because some leave and some come back. You've got to learn how to maintain your freedom. And God, that's what discipling is. And God is going to show you. So if you're falling into fornication, that's a demonic entry point. If you're always angry, that's a demonic entry point. If you're always gossiping, that's a demonic entry point. I'm not going to go into more detail, but we've been teaching this in group sessions. And I have to find a way to see how I can send those messages out of, outside of private life and life. Because we teach, this is what we equip the people with. But so many people don't understand. It's not one area. There are other areas, but God has made a way. You don't have to be overwhelmed. You just have to be on fire. God, I'm not going to give up. The blood that was shed on Calvary will set me free. But if I don't have some knowledge from the word, I will perish. I need us to know Some of you will not believe this. You don't have to accept it. But you've got to watch what and where you eat. You've got to understand the first problem that came on the planet is that Eve, Adam and Eve did not watch what they ate. You've got to watch what you eat. That's all I'll say. You need to hate the enemies of God, and we are not speaking of human beings. The Word of God says, Psalm 139, 21 to 22, Do I not hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Demons use humans to come up against God. You never pray against a human being. You pray against the demons that are using them. And with perfect hatred, you hate demonic entities that are set to destroy the kingdom of God. You must be a man or woman of the word. You must have a working knowledge of the Bible. Those who are illiterate of the Bible will experience ineffective deliverance. That's the key. Sure, you pray prayer points, but the best prayer points are prayer points that are, is the word of God written out and you speak it over yourself. You must read the word every day. You must have quiet time. Study the word. Take time in God's presence. And that's why God calls if you think of a family, if one person in the family is doing all the housework, all the cooking, all the washing, then you're going to find that one person is overburdened. When God calls you to church community, God calls all the members to help. So that if mommy at home doesn't have time to read the word because everybody at home lets her do everything. Then you've got to help her. Because while those at home are reading the word, she may not have time because she's burdened with doing everything. I'm using that analogy for the church. Because we've got to spend time in his presence, saints. That's part of what will help us. But if some are working more than others because people have to be fed, then those who are not doing anything need to rise up. We all must make sure we don't leave our first love. The burden will be lighter as everyone puts their hand to the plow. 
You must be holy and live a clean life. Any dirty lifestyle will enable the enemy to overpower you. You're not going to get away with, I'm one way for church and another way outside. Why am I still struggling? Because as fast as you get deliverance, you go back like a dog to its vomit. It has nothing to do with the anointing not strong enough, something wrong with the pastor. This is a work of the spirit. It has nothing to do with the pastor. There's always a reason why we struggle with complete deliverance and God will show us. And this is why as hard as this is for the economy, God will use it, keeping his church behind closed doors to take stock of the things that we are too busy going to church to take stock of or going to work. But be careful. Many are now becoming more busy in quarantine. Begin to carve out more time in his presence. Their secret sin. Luke 12, 3. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be head, shall be exposed to the light. And that which you have spoken in the air in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. What's done in darkness is going to come to light. You must live a life of prayer and fasting. We've been teaching a series on fasting. Every Christian today, in some way or another, should be regularly fasting. Fasting and prayer is an integral part of deliverance. Jesus stated categorically that some demons are resistant to gentle prayers. A lot of stubborn powers will only bow out when they are confronted with a weapon of prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. You must learn to be careful with your worship music, but you must learn to use anointed worship music. Like when David played the harp, Saul got relief. Demons depart at the sound of holy music being performed by anointed people. It's not every music that's anointed saints. And bondage will be destroyed when the power of God is released through anointed worship music or anointed music. Remember, in Acts 16.25, at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And what happened? The earthquake of deliverance was released. Now, they may not have had any keyboard playing. I'm just saying. They praised God. Remember early on we said, make music in your hearts. Oh, Father, I praise you. I bless you. I exalt you. You are most high God. You are El Shaddai. Oh, I bow down before you. You are king of glory. You are father of glory. You are my glory. You are God of Israel. You are almighty God. You are the Lord of hosts. You are commander of the army of the Lord. I worship you. Oh, I praise you, my strength. Oh, I praise you, Lord, my banner. I worship you. I am that I am. I exalt you. Everlasting Father. Everlasting God, ancient of days, Alpha and Omega, who is and was, and who is to come, I worship you. Saints, I don't want to stop, but I know I have to finish teaching. There is a fire that will come. You worship God. Sing praises to him. Begin to grow in that dimension of your walk. See what happens. The earthquake of deliverance will take place. Pray for revelation knowledge. Ask God to deepen your understanding of his word. And I could go on and on. Last one I'll leave you with. Repent of ungodly ways. Repent of ungodly ways. 
Total repentance is the key to deliverance. But you've got to be truthful about your spiritual state. You must be downright honest because it is the truth that sets you free. I want to pray with you before we close. I want you to open your hearts and I, I want to ask Rev. Chris, do you have the words to the goodness of God? Yeah? Okay. Oh, he's such a great... I just love the team that I have. I just have to tell you. I just want to give honor to my husband. He's such a great team member. Like, he just finds all the stuff that I need. I can't do what he does. He tells me he can't do what I do. We make a team. Glory to God. I want to say to you, open your heart. I wouldn't sing yet. I'm praying for them. Hallelujah. Open your hearts right now. Father, release your fire. Release your break anointing upon the people. Oh God, in their homes right now. Father, right now, saints, I want you to come before the throne of mercy and begin to repent of your sins. If you are desiring God to do a work in you, then there are things in us that have to go. Father, forgive us for offending you. Father, we repent of the sins of our heart, our mouth, our mind, in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive us for grieving you. Father, we cry out that you may not judge us according to our sins, but according to your mercies. Father, we forsake every rebellious way which is against the kingdom of our Father. Let our weakness turn into strength. Let your strength replace our weakness in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we plead with you. Touch us and give us a new heart that will obey you at all times. Father, I stand as I come in agreement with my brothers and sisters. We repent of all sins motivated by Satan in our life in the name of Jesus. We repent of agreeing with hell through any sin in our life in the name of Jesus. I bind right now every satanic power hindering your true repentance in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit that obstructs true repentance in the people of God burn by fire in the name of Jesus. God rain down Holy Ghost fire upon every satanic mechanism that promotes pride in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost burn away through your fire, your consuming fire, every devil that's coming against repentance in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, set the people free from ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in Jesus' mighty name. On their behalf, oh God, Father, I speak the words, break the yokes. I renounce all hatred, anger, resentment, revenge, retaliation, and unforgiveness, and bitterness in the lives of the people in Jesus' mighty name. And I drive out those devils in Jesus' mighty name. Father, on their behalf, I renounce all vices and bad habits that have bound them in Jesus' mighty name. I renounce pride, envy, jealousy, covetousness on their behalf in Jesus' mighty name. God, this year, fear will have no part in them. I renounce on their behalf all negative fears with all its torments in the name of Jesus. I renounce on their behalf all ungodly covenants, oaths, vows made by their ancestors all the way back to Adam on both sides of their family in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, on their behalf, I forbid and shake off, shake off of them every demonic straitjacket that has paralyzed them from expanding their tents in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, let there be a spirit of revival among your people and upon your church in the mighty name of Jesus. Fan that flame of revival upon your people, O oh God, and upon the church. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, I ask you right now that your people will receive wind of the Spirit blow. Blow upon your people. Blow upon your people. Blow upon your people right now. Refill, refresh families right now. In the mighty name of Jesus.